one of my pet peeves about camping etiquette. If you don't know these, please stick around. I'm going to start with number 10 and go to my number one pet peeve. I'm a 71-year-old woman who loves to camp and travel. Most of the time, I take my little schnauzer sneakers with me. I belong to four lady camp groups, and one I started in my area. One of the reasons we bought the Mini Winnie was so I could go more on my own, or with my lady camper groups. My channel, Crafty Traveler, isn't only about crafting, it's about being crafty smart. When traveling, camping, quilting, and doing crafts. Hello, crafters and travelers. It's Lonnie with Crafty Traveler. And today, I want to tell you about some of my pet peeves about etiquette and camping rules. Here we go. First off, I'd like to thank all of you for watching. If you're a subscriber, welcome back. And if you're not, I hope this video inspires you to become a subscriber. Just click the little subscribe button and don't forget the bell so that you get notified. Number 10, please don't jump in to help someone who has arrived at the campground. Now as a woman, and if I'm traveling alone, there have been people who have asked if I needed help. Sometimes I do. And other times I say, no thanks, I've got it. And that's fine. Of course, I have a small motor home, 24 foot, so it's not too hard to park. And I can even back it up. I have backup cameras and mirrors and I can do that easily. I have asked for help a couple of times when I'm in a narrow spot or I know that there's a tree close by. <laughs> I had experience with trees a while back and I appreciate the, the help when I ask for it. I've also asked for help when I'm unhooking my little tow car from my RV because sometimes those tow bars get tweaked and I need someone a little stronger than myself to pull the pins out. And that's all good and I appreciate that. But there's other times when other people have their own routines, their own system, and if you interrupt them then they may forget something and that could be a safety hazard. So keep that in mind, please. Number nine, quiet hours. Most of the time in RV parks or even uh, national forest parks or campgrounds, they post quiet hours, usually from 10 p.m. till 7 a.m. Please respect those quiet hours. There are people sleeping. Please stop talking loudly, turn the music off, by 10 p.m. Now there's times when you might be pulling into the campground or you have to leave early and that's understandable but try and do it as quietly as possible. I know those big diesel truck engines are very loud and sometimes you just can't help it. And if you pull into a campground or a camping spot after 10 p.m. again please don't sit out in front of your camp camp and talk loudly. The rest of us are trying to sleep. Number eight, generators. Now I have a generator and I have to use it sometimes, but I try not to use it during the hours after 10 and before 7 a.m. And of course if I'm in a resort or a park or somewhere that has generator hours, I respect them. I understand some people might have to run their generators at night, all night, because of the air conditioning, or maybe they have a medical device, and that's understandable, 
but then if you're in a dispersed campground, camping area, you need to be farther away from the majority of the people. Now, let's say you park out there and you're all alone and people come around you, then they have to deal with that. Or you could say to them, hey, I have to have my generator on during the night to run my AC or to run my medical device. At least you've warned them. With me, I do use a CPAP and I can plug it in to my 12 volt system right above my bed. And that works great. Now, for some reason, if I had no battery, then I have a Blue Eddy that I can use to run my CPAP at night. And I'm very careful not to turn my generator on before 7 or 8 o'clock in the morning. Of course, I'm not usually up before 7 in the morning, so that's not an issue with me. So please be aware of your surroundings. Be aware of people. Be mindful of people that are around you, and let them know. You might have to use your generator all night. The next one is about lighting. Now we all need good lighting to look good and to have the lighting around your RV is fine, but don't light it up like a Christmas tree and leave it that way all night. You're probably shining your lights in someone else's RV. Even though those people might have curtains and blinds and even blackout curtains, the light can pierce through. So be aware of your surroundings and other people and tone down the lights. You know, the little blue lights that people put under their RV to deter mice may or may not work. I don't know of any scientific evidence that means that that is true. I like to use the little solar lights that you can place underneath your RV. There are little solar light that are motion sensor. So if I place them under my RV, they're only going to go on if something goes past them to make the motion sensor go off. So please. Be aware of your lighting. Number six, please don't come up to the campsite unannounced. If you walk up to the campsite, you see the door is open, say hello, yoo-hoo, somebody home, something like that. I have a dog, and he barks at anything anyway. And if he sees coming someone coming, even if they say those things, he starts to bark. But that's okay. I can correct him. If you just come up unannounced, he may run up to the end of his leash. So we want to try and avoid that. He's never bitten anybody yet. <laughs> so at least do that. And if you have to come up to the door, you know, you got to come to the door. You could still say, hello, yoo-hoo, anybody home, before you actually knock at the door. And the dog will probably alert me, and I can again correct him and then see who it is. So please announce yourself when coming up to a campsite. Don't just come up quietly. And along with announcing yourself, please don't just walk through. I know some of the RV parks, they're parked real close together, but please walk around, especially if you know someone's home. Especially if you, there's a dog. I can have Snickers tied up outside, and I have seen him. People start to walk through, and he will start to bark and chase them off and on his leash. Again, he's never bitten anybody, and I hope he never does. But my dog's just little. There are other people out there with bigger dogs. So be aware. And it's just rude to walk through somebody's campsite, especially when the people are there. Now, when I was a young girl and we were camped and I was fishing the creek, sometimes there was no way other than to go through someone's campsite. If I saw those people there, I said, hey, can I walk through your campsite? And then never, no one ever refused me, but at least I asked permission to walk through their campsite. 
when we were parked up at uh, West Yellowstone. <laughs> that place was, we were tight. We were so tight, we couldn't park our truck between our trailer. We had our trailer at the time and the other person's trailer. We had to park in another spot. So I'll show you this is what we did. We actually took the picnic table and parked it perpendicular to the trailer and that stopped people from walking through. So do what you have to do. Maybe you have to put chairs out or something to get so they're not in your way. Now there are other campsites that are really large and there's plenty of room for them to walk past between you and your neighbor. Maybe that's okay. But I would still ask if they're sitting out there, if they could, if you could walk through. That's just being polite. I believe this is number four. I believe this is number four. Fire pit use. Please don't put your trash in the fire pit. Now, if you're going to put paper in there and burn it, that's a different story. But I found cans and even some uh, food waste in the fire pit. Please don't do that. That's what trash receptacles are for. And if you're in a dispersed camping, you need to haul it out so other people don't have to deal with it. I also read this past summer that someone built a fire in a fire pit and there were live ammunition in it. So I would also suggest that you kind of shift under there to make sure that there's no live ammunition or anything in there because those people that lit that fire, they did have a couple of explosions. Luckily, no one was hurt. So be very aware of what's in the fire pit before you start the fire. And then once you've started your fire and you have enjoyed your fire, please put it out properly. Use water, use dirt, shift the ashes so they're cold to touch. Whenever you're not in your space, whenever you're going to bed, and of course when you leave your site, please be aware of the fire hazards. With all the drought that we've had, it doesn't take much. One spark can cause a fire of thousands of acres. So please be fire safe. Pets and camping. We all love our pets. We all want to take them. I have a dog. I take my dog with me. He's my first line of defense because he barks at everything. <laughs> a little too much sometimes. However, I always keep him on a leash. He might be on a little longer leash when he's at my campsite. But when I'm walking him, he's on a six-foot leash like he should be. Keep your dogs, even your cats, on a leash. It's for their own safety. They could run out and get hit by a vehicle. They could be injured by another camper's animal. And when you're out in the wild, there are wild animals. And dogs are tasty morsels for coyotes. So be very careful with your pets when camping. You let them run around, they can get thorns in their feet, they could eat plants that are poisonous to them. So be very aware of what's around your pet and pick up their mess, pick up their excrement. Always take a baggie. I have a leash with the, has the little uh, container on there to have the baggie. You know, if you're not able to have a baggie or you run out and they do their business and you're out in the wilderness, at least cover it up. But when you're in a campground of any kind, you've got to pick it up. If you f forget your baggie, you've got to come back and pick it up. It is a hazardous waste. I want to read this to you that I found on the internet about dog excrement. The EPA classifies dog poop as a hazardous waste 
and has found that it's responsible for large amounts of water pollution. Dog poop can also spread infections to humans and wildlife. So that's one of the reasons the national parks don't allow dogs on their trails because people don't pick up after them. They're out in the wilderness. And then even wildlife can get diseases from our domesticated dogs. Even if you vaccinated them and they're healthy, it's still important to pick up their waste. How many times have you stepped in dog poop? Blech. So, pick it up. I believe this is number two. Dumping your sewer. I have seen so many people dump their sewers using their sewer hose and not using gloves. Ugh. Even if you rinse off the sewer hose each time, there's still bacteria that's on that sewer hose. And then I'm sure if you don't use gloves, you don't wash your hands very much either. So use gloves when handling your sewer hose. From the time you take it out of your box or your bag or wherever you store it until you've put it all away, then take the gloves off, and then wash your hands or use sanitizer. Being from the medical community, there are germs everywhere. And those that come from our feces are some of the worst. So wear gloves and wash your hands. Be aware of where your sewer connections are. In one campground last year, our sewer connection was very close to our neighbor's door. In fact, they had their chairs set out and we moved in and connected our sewer and they moved their chairs because I'm sure it didn't smell very well. Now they weren't there when we left, but if they had been there, I would have said, we got to dump, we got to go. So you're letting them know that's going to happen and maybe they are not going to sit out there and eat their lunch or something. So be aware of that. The other thing is make sure your connections are, con are connected correctly. What I do, connect my sewer to my RV, put it in the sewer hole, Maybe put a rock on it. Make sure it's it's going to stay there when you start to pull your lever. Now, I've read and I've seen people say, oh, pull your black lever first. No. I'm going to pull my gray just for a little bit. Just to make sure everything is connected and there's not going to be any leaks. Then I'll push it back in. Then I'll pull my black and let it drain. And then I'll pull my gray and rinse it all out. And that helps to rinse it out because that's soapy water. It's come from my kitchen sink and it's come from my bathroom and my shower. So it rinses everything out. And then sometimes you have to lift it up, the hose up a little bit, kind of massage it to get it all out. But at least you're doing it with the gray. So if something is disconnects, it's gray water, not black water. Okay, my number one pet peeve of unwritten camping etiquette rules is this. Pick up your trash. Don't leave waste around. And if you're out dispersed camping, don't leave your human waste. You gotta bury it. You gotta get rid of it. Don't just leave it out there. This is why they are closing BLM lands to overnight camping. It's because people are not picking up after themselves. Your mother doesn't live there. You've got to pick it up and clean it up. So do it. The other thing is, don't deface the rocks or the buildings or the trees. We all want to enjoy them. We don't want to see your graffiti on them. We don't want you to cut down the trees. So 
leave your markers at home. We don't want to see that. We want to see nature at its best. One motto I like to live by, take only pictures and leave only footprints. Well, now you know my 10 pet peeves of camping etiquette and rules. They're not written down anywhere. A lot of them are just common sense. So please just use common sense and everybody can enjoy the camping areas. If you like the video and you got something from it, give me a thumbs up. Comment, share, and subscribe. Stay crafty, smart, creative, and safe. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate all my viewers. Take care. Bye now.